Well, a lot of people in China is asking me about whether China is go going to the way of Japan 30 years ago. And <clears throat> uh, my take on this is that China is going to have what I call balance sheet recession, the concept I came up with 20 years ago, with uh, asset prices falling, liabilities remaining, people trying to repair balance sheets. But if they do it all at the same time, the economy weakens because in the national economy, if someone is saving money, someone has to be borrowing money. And if everybody starts repairing balance sheets all at the same time, and no one's on the other side, even at zero interest rates, the economy weakens. That's what I call balance sheet recession. And China is likely to face this kind of uh, prospect going forward, given what's happening to the asset markets. But at the same time, Chinese are also very aware of this disease called balance sheet recession. My book has been selling very well in China over the <coughs> last uh, decade or so. And I was asked to buy, uh, write a new introduction to uh, warn Chinese people that this can happen again in China. So what, I, what, what does that mean is that China knows what kind of disease they're going to face, and they know exactly how to cure it. And so they're not going to waste time with uh, structural reform policies or monetary easing policies. They go straight to fiscal stimulus because that is what's needed in a balance sheet recession. When the private sector is immobilized by their balance sheet problems, they cannot borrow. They're still saving money. Only government can come in and borrow that money and keep the economy going, allow the people to have income to repair their balance sheets. And my sense is that China is going to do exactly that. And therefore, it's not going to be such a long, drawn-out uh, problem that happened in Japan or in Europe or uh, United States, especially after 2008. But having said that, there are other problems in China that Japan never had to face 30 years ago. For example, population is declining already. Japanese population started declining in 2009. That's 19 years after bursting of the bubble. In the Chinese case, they're both happening at the same year. And that's going to be quite a bit of challenge. And Chinese economy actually have been supported with government spending for the last five, uh, six years or so because Chinese companies, for some reason, have not been borrowing money. I mean, once the balance sheet recession happens and companies stop borrowing money, that's one thing. But Chinese companies have stopped borrowing money like five, six years ago. But the household sector was still saving money. So government had to borrow the money to keep the Chinese economy going. What that means is that they have to start with this already pretty large budget deficit and have to extend it even further. And that might cause some you know, financing problems and other issues, which Japanese never have to worry about 30 years ago. So overall, China will probably uh, end, end to balance sheet recession, but they know how to handle it. But the other problems, the population declines, suddenly com Jap uh, Chinese companies not borrowing money even before the bubble bursting, all of those problems will be uh, affecting the Chinese economic growth.